Hey everyone, it's Tira with Rent Mason Bees back out at our warehouse where we are processing all of your returns. Our pile is getting shorter, so we're getting there. So thank you for returning all of your nesting blocks so that we can harvest them next month. Um, and thank you for all your little notes. We love getting notes from hosts and we love the stories about how many blueberries have been pollinated and how many more apples you have on your apple tree. Because as we know, our solitary bees are such incredible belly flopping pollinators that pollinate so well. Um, so as we're processing your orders, we do like to open up the blocks and examine the bees and see how they've done. And um, we do try to respond, if you have any questions for us in your returns, we do try to respond to those, um, all those questions and emails. Um, but I wanted to show you, this is, uh, we opened up a whole bunch of nesting blocks today, and I wanted to show you a little bit about what we're finding inside. Now, if you haven't watched the part one, part two, part three series of what are your baby bees doing, check out our YouTube channel where we open up the blocks and show you exactly the larvae state to the cocoon state. It's pretty cool to see. Um, but as we're examining our bees today, We've noticed that, uh, again, every season this happens, we have so many pollen mites. So these are little pollen mites. And a lot of people love to host their own mason bees. And if you do, it's so important to harvest and clean. Because what happens in the spring when this, this is a fully grown, well, the bee will emerge from this little cocoon and he'll crawl or she or he will crawl through the chamber, through the pollen mites, out to get out. And as it crawls through, these little pollen mites will stick to the back and it will eventually kill the bee and then also spread pollen mites all over the flowers. Um, the other thing that we're noticing are the Houdini fly larvae. And again, these guys will stay here all winter long and they will emerge with the mason bees in the springtime as well. And they eat the pollen loaf that the mason bee left for its baby. And then the, the Houdini fly larvae will then eat all of it and it will kill the mason bee. And you can see here, these were little baby mason bee larvae that have chalk brood and fungus on them that has killed them. So it is it's so important to harvest and clean all of your mason bee cocoons every fall. I know I mention it over and over again, but it's just so important to reiterate how critical it is to harvest and clean your cocoons because these predators can decimate our solitary bee populations. Um, so those are some of the mason bee blocks that we've seen. And then over here, oh you guys, look at this. These are our leaf cutter bee blocks that we've opened up. And look at this one. This was one of my favorite ones that we found today. Um, leaf cutter bees will use tiny pieces of leaves to create their uh, little nesting sleeping bags for their babies. And they will also sometimes use flower petals. So you can see these looks like, like some roses and some different purple and yellow flowers. But inside each one of these little cells is a tiny little egg that will then develop into a leaf cutter bee. So we are having a lot of fun um, opening up your boxes and re, um, going through all of your returns. Um, and just wanted to share with you a little bit about what we see um, on our team. And um, just thank you and appreciate all of our hosts that are hosting um, because without you, we wouldn't have all these bees to go out and help farmers pollinate all of the crops and the food that, that you will be eating in your home. So those blueberries or strawberries or apples or cherries that you're eating, those are made by pollinators. So I hope everyone's doing well and we'll check in next time. Thank you.